um, fought a Faulkner phase, where I just read absolutely every single book written by each of those authors. And then I came more towards contemporary fiction, I had a John Updike phase, read dozens of him, Don DeLillo, um, like I said earlier, Tom Wolfe is probably my favourite <coughs> of all the contemporary fiction, followed by DeLillo. Um, Annie Crew, um, who's the who's the lady that writes the short stories as well? That's really good. What's the American author that writes short stories? They're always grotesque. Who is? No, that's a Flannery O'Connor is the only one. Flannery O'Connor. Well, it's not her that I'm talking about. Well, I had a Flannery O'Connor phase as well. I wanted to name my first daughter Flannery. And Absolutely. We went mad and we She's didn't one, have her best, one of the best writers ever. Flannery O'Connor, Annie Proves good as well. Um, so yeah, I read all these books and it, it changed the way I think. I felt all of my former belief system being stripped away. It was like it was laying down this new mental apparatus, especially reading all these psychology books and philosophy books because it. Um, I lean on that stuff now when I get stressed out, like Epictetus, we're not bothered by things but by the views that we take of them. It's all we can choose how we react to situations basically. It's like contemporary psychology just draws all this stuff from these old classics and recycles it and calls it cognitive or behavioural or whatever. Um, so yes, I went for this fantastic journey through literature and that helped, helped my writing after I got through all this awkward phase of trying to emulate and try all these things out. And um, you know, I'm still learning. I don't have time to read as much anymore. I think what was the last book I read? A Million Little Pieces. I read that one recently. Um, I try to stick with contemporary fiction now because you do. Joyce Carol Oates was the person I was trying to remember from before. She's brilliant as well. If I, if I read anything archaic now, like Dickens and stuff like that, I notice that my prose will change. So I try and stay with contemporary fiction. Otherwise, it, old stuff not really knocks me out of my orbit. And my writing starts to these archaic phrases start to show up in it. Um, okay, yeah, so that's that's where I'm at now, just trying to write. I've got 100,000 words down for the, pre, um, the prequel to Hard Time. My main thing is, has been, from when I first started writing all this stuff, a lot of it was disparate anecdotes. So my problem was really understanding what the arc of a story meant and getting rid of all the old side anecdotes that didn't further the story and just keeping stuff that keeps people gripped and keeps the story moving along. I had a problem with that for a long time. Um, even now, you know, I have to have people, proofreaders, read my stuff and say, look, this story's got nothing to do with furthering the plot. You just got to get rid of it. And it might be you know, a story I particularly like and painfully, like, it's getting wrenched from me, but I understand that it's got to go. So that's where I am now. Um, I had 100,000 words about six months ago and 30,000 have gone and 30,000 new ones have come in because I'm just trying to bring, I'm interviewing people all over America and England uh, recording the conversations because I've found as well, I'm very heavy on dialogue. I think dialogue is, is action, it keeps, it keeps the pace going and it helps because it's a true story. You get to um, form your own opinions through the character's words instead of my interpretation of their words. People have particular nuances in their speech. So for example, um, my girlfriend Claudia is one of the main characters in Hard Time. Now, she went on and got another boyfriend. Um, I don't want to spoil the plot. But anyway, she kept all the, she, um, Claudia kept, oh, there must have been hundreds of all these letters that I sent her from prison and jail over the years. And she stuffed them under a bed in this massive big box. And she FedExed them to me um, after I got released. So